York YZV pressure transducers. Today I'm replacing a pressure transducer, actually two pressure transducers on a York YZV Affinity Series modulating variable capacity outdoor unit. And today I'm gonna to show you how I replace this transducer so that maybe it will help you to understand what you have to do to replace these. I'm gonna talk about why they go bad and I'm gonna talk about uh, diagnosing this part and what you will see when one of these pressure transducers goes bad. So let me show you the pressure transducers on this unit and then I'm gonna show you the part and I'm gonna to talk to you and show you what I do to replace it. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. Got all the tools here. Just finished recovering the refrigerant because this unit holds 12 pounds of refrigerant. This is the outdoor unit and it's known as the YZV, right? The YZV. And this is a heat pump. That right there is an electronic expansion valve. And you can see that is the discharge pressure transducer. And that is the suction pressure transducer. And when you order one of these pressure transducers, you wanna make sure that you order the wiring harness. And this is what the part looks like, right? This is the red one, this is for the discharge, and this is the blue, and that is for the suction, right? And they send you this fitting here, and then they send you this little stem, right? This little Schrader core. And they expect you to weld this piece right here onto uh, that quarter inch piece of copper right there. See? But I don't do that. I make this a lot easier on myself because work smarter, not harder, right? So whenever you order the pressure transducer, make sure you order the wiring harness. And that includes this little plug here and then here's the other side. This is what plugs into that pressure transducer because usually water gets in here and it corrodes these points. And you don't need that, it corrodes the plug. I'm gonna show you a part number. This is the part number for the pressure, uh, high pressure, uh, pressure transducer harness, right? That's that part number. And then this is the box that the transducer comes in, see? suction pressure transducer all right and then just in case you need it here's the part number for the discharge and then here is the other harness part number okay but make sure you order the harness all right now i'm going to show you what i do to get prepared and that is i'm using the spin tool product this is the swag tool and then also you'll want two of these, okay? And this is a service access uh, port or service access fitting. First thing I do to prepare to install these pressure transducers is I get my little service access fitting and I put my little Schrader core, my stem valve inside. I don't screw it all the way in because of course uh, the pressure transducer has a a little depressor in there, which I don't know if you can see that, but if you can see that, it depresses the stem or presses down on the stem to where it can read the pressure. So I put that inside, okay, right there. And then I screw this onto it, okay? So that's why you need two of those, okay? Now, once you get that screwed on there, get your other one ready put that inside don't screw it all the way in you see you leave a little bit out okay i do not want to weld this because what they wanted you to do was screw this on here and then weld this dude i don't want to do that that is that's no fun right that's no fun so what i'm going to do is i have this here now I'm going to make sure that I tighten it. You want to make sure this is tight, right? Because whenever you install this, you don't want to have to try to reach inside the outdoor unit to get to this. Also don't want to over tighten it. All right. 
All right, so I tightened the discharge pressure transducer. Now I'm going to tighten the suction. Don't want to over tighten it. And that should do it right there. Now, see that? Now we're almost ready for the install. There's one more step. What is that step? That includes the swadging tool. Make sure you get the quarter inch. And you take your drill. Install that there. And then, so that you don't burn yourself. Because you will burn yourself. I'm going to hold this right here. And then... Make your swag. See that? Now, why am I doing this? Because when I cut right below those pressure transducers, I'm going to be able to slip this right into it. Ba-ting! And then I'll be able to brace it up. Boom. Makes my job easier. Work smarter, not harder, right? I just want you to know that if you have to order one of these and you have to replace it, I want you to be confident in the process and go, oh yeah, all I have to do is have that little swadging tool and a little access fitting and I'm good to go, right? So, like this. Oh, lost my grip. You do not want to try to hold this with your hand. Beautiful. Be careful when you finish swadging the pipe. It is going to be very hot. You don't want to touch it. But look. We're good to go. Look at that. Awesome. Now I'm going to get my tubing cutters. I'm going to go inside the unit in the outdoor section, outdoor unit, and I'm going to cut right below where these are installed. Okay. All right. So make sure you pull the power for the disconnect. And we're going to replace these harnesses. Now get a wet rag. I've got two wet rags and I'm going to wrap these up that way this little stem inside doesn't get hot and then of course this body of this transducer doesn't get hot while I'm brazing. Using the tubing cutters to cut right below that pressure transducer. Got both of these pressure transducers wrapped up tight and this is a wet towel or rag so I'm ready to put them in. All right, now I got both of those cut off and we're ready to install. Now we are ready to braise. See? I've got my little Ambro control set of torches. Let's do this. Brazed both of those connections and it's really hard to get in there, but. Got it all braised, gonna put some nitrogen in, and then I'm gonna pull a vacuum. If you wanna know how to pull a vacuum, I got a video down below for you. Get some nitrogen, put about 300 pounds of nitrogen inside of the system, and then get some soap bubbles, and you wanna make sure that you don't have any leaks. I'm gonna show you where to check. You wanna check right here where you tightened the little pressure transducer onto that little service access fitting. You want to check right here. And if it's leaking on either one of the pressure transducers on that fitting, you want to make sure that you get a couple crescent wrenches, adjustable wrenches, or a pair of channel locks, pliers, and tighten it up. All right, got both of the pressure transducers plugged in. Got the wires routed up and they go right here where it says suction and discharge pressure transducer. So we're in good shape. See that suction, discharge, pressure transducer, three wire plugs. Now I'm going to pull a vacuum. If you want to know how to pull a vacuum, got a video on that. I'll drop it down in the link in the description. I'm going to go ahead and let the nitrogen out. 
been five minutes exactly and we are at about 700 microns so this little thing is pretty impressive just finished pulling the vacuum and i'm pretty impressed with this setup the vacuum gauge and the pump cordless vacuum pump and now i've got the recovery tank uh, cylinder hooked up to the gauges and i'm going to charge this equipment 12 pounds 10 ounces all right 11 pounds we got about a pound and a half left we're going to get the rest of that out of another tank so power's back on if you want to know how the pressure transducer is bad if you ever look at this screen on the master communication board for this york unit sometimes you'll have you know 240 over here and then you'll have like two or zero or five and it just won't make sense and that's when you know for sure those pressure transducers are bad you have one pressure transducer go bad or fail replace both of them that's what i do i think it's a good idea because then i don't have one failing later on down the road that i have to replace got the other pound and 10 ounces so that makes 12 pounds 10 ounces and we are good to go let's start this thing up and make sure nothing else is wrong unit just kicked on check out the display before it kicked on it said standby and i don't hear the compressor but we should hear it in just a moment then I'll put the panel on after I verify it's working correctly and we're good to go. Also went into the log on the thermostat and reset the log. If you don't know anything about these units, I've got a video where I show you tips on installing. So I'll put that down in the description so you can learn more. Compressors ramping up. Subcooling's rising. Superheat's going down. 111 and 258, 259 looking good so far if you ever need to reset the log for one of these hx thermostats push the settings button system go to log not connected to the router low suction pressure go down here hit reset log hold this and then it's empty and sometimes it'll be right here and you can just hit this button and we should be good to go now settings if you want to go to the service mode hit service button hold it for five seconds all right now you can look at different things here non-programmable programmable all right good deal so we've got it on cooling 70 